name's Adana. Um, I popped it because you seem very tired. No way. Like extra and Friday. Like, like Big Smokey. A woman who accused former Dodger Trevor Bauer of assault has now been indicted. A woman who accused former Dodgers pitcher Trevor Bauer of sexual assault has been charged with fraud in Arizona. A grand jury indictment unsealed Monday accuses Darcy Adana Esmonu of fraud. And Darcy Adana. Listen, what's insane to me is I actually remember this video. I actually remember the video that they just showed earlier, right, of her on the Pop the Balloon show. I remember watching that video. Do you guys actually remember this chick? Because to me, I immediately recognize her face from the show. Let's keep listening. Theft by extortion against Bauer and another man. As Monu sued Bauer, saying he raped her and got her pregnant in 2020. Bauer says she demanded money to terminate the pregnancy, but later said she had a miscarriage. Bauer posted a five-minute video on YouTube responding to the indictment and addressing allegations at large for the first time in months. Here's the thing. She never had an abortion because she was never even pregnant. And that's wow. corroborated by her own medical records. Uh, when I refused to pay her the $3.6 million she was asking for, she made up a bogus assault claim and filed a civil suit against me. In the countersuit, Bauer's lawyers claim she took the money for the abortion and went to Philadelphia to get LASIK eye surgery. There are women that will try and ensnare you and extort you for money. And if they... Uh, come out with these claims and they smear your reputation, they can destroy your career. Break the copy, it'll make you feel better. All right, so real quick, guys, just for as long as I've known about this particular situation with this athlete, I haven't known that it was actually attached to a face. I may be late to this. Is this chick facing the consequences that she deserves up to 16 years in prison? If you ask me, I would say yes. If you ask me, I think this doesn't happen very often. I don't see a lot of people getting held accountable for false accusations. Could this be the beginning of that? Could this be the beginning of that? A lot of people have a lot of different opinions when it comes to this particular topic. Let's keep listening. We tried reaching out to Asmonu and her legal team, but were unsuccessful. Her next court date is next week, and she could face more than 16 years if convicted on both charges. Darcy Adana Asmonu has been criminally indicted for committing felony fraud against me and another man. Break and now coffee, she's facing up to 16 better. years in prison. We had one plain sexual encounter in December of 2020. Nothing that could be considered remotely rough. Uh, she initiated it, but don't take my word for it. Take hers. This is a picture and text message she sent me the next morning explaining why she came on to me. And for months afterwards, she repeatedly requested to sleep with me again. Uh, for example, this text from January. It says, I'm not certain. Yeah, it's kind of covering it there. I sleep over later. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to let you guys pause it and actually read it because the way my situation here is set up. Let's just get through this. January 7th, 2021. At one point, she even requested a sample of my sperm so she could have my child whenever she wanted to in the future. Now, it's hard to keep track, but she's made at least four seven-figure demands over the last few years. Uh, more than a year after the one time we slept together, Adana retained a lawyer. Uh, she then demanded $3.6 million and claimed I forced her to have an leaving her emotionally devastated and irretrievably damaged by it. But uh, here's the thing, she never had an because she was never even pregnant, and that's corroborated by her own medical records. Uh, when I refused to pay her the $3.6 million she was asking for, she made up a bogus sexual assault claim and filed a civil suit against me. In that version of her story, she claimed for the first time, by the way, uh, that there was non-consensual sex, but her texts from the next morning show what actually happened. Remember this text in which she explains why she came on to me? Right. Uh, she also claims that instead of an she actually had a miscarriage, but that's impossible, of course, because again, she was never even pregnant. Uh, we now have emails between her and the first two law firms that dropped her in which they acknowledge they never had any evidence to support her claims, but they'll try to get my money anyway. I then shared an audio recording I have in which Adana contradicts her own claims and asks me for money. In the emails, her lawyers agreed that that's insurmountable evidence, and they inform Adana that they can no longer represent her unless she can provide documentation or proof of her claims. All right, so she's obviously trying to get money. Here's my problem when it comes to the athletes I see fall into these situations. Let's not skip over the fact that he said she asked him for a sample of his 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 seed she asked for a sample of his seed 
It didn't sound like that was when he knew to cut off the conversation. And there's got to be some blame put in men who are in these situations when you see some obvious red flags that are at least that glaring obvious, right? Hopefully, if you're watching this and a woman is asking for a sample of your seed, that would be some very obvious red flags that you're, of course, going to watch out for and escape that woman with everything you've got fast, not slow. And if you're a guy who doesn't have money, of course, you don't have to worry about these women who leech on you for your money. But then there are other women out there who use babies to trap you or you have the really vindictive chicks. If you're out here dating and you upset some chick and she goes out to lie about you, so on and so forth. We really haven't seen a lot of justice brought to those type of situations and cases. But again, you got to be smarter than this, man. You got to be smarter than this. If you're dating out here, especially today, you've got to be smarter than this because to me, I see this chick. I'm looking and I what, what comes through my mind is this is a woman who in her life probably has learned to do this stuff from platforms like TikTok, you know, the sheer seven types, the type of people who believe that their sole purpose in life is to find a rich man and then suck him dry of, no pun intended, all of his resources, drink the drink coffee. The coffee it'll make you feel better. But you know what I mean? Watch out. Watch out. You gotta you gotta watch out. And also it proves that there's some dangerous people on that pop the balloon show. Let's keep listening. Yeah, of course, she couldn't do that. So the law firm urged her to consult other law firms with different standards. Now, Adana has filed more than 10 police reports claiming assault or harassment against other men, including at least one other professional athlete. But after the Scottsdale police completed their investigation into her claim against me, she's the one being indicted for felony fraud. And not just against me, against another man as well. Now, she made up bogus assault claims and attempted to extort him too. And it gets worse. In my lawsuit against her, we subpoenaed a witness whom she knew for relevant documents to use in our case. And when she found out, she immediately made assault claims against him too. Uh, her MO is clear. Lie to men to get their money, extort them if she must, and when they refuse to pay, stop paying or stop giving her what she wants, go to the police, accuse them of sexual assault, and file a civil suit against them to retaliate. I think she would be somebody that probably could be my A, 1A, if I were to run my business and include her in it. And, um, um what, what, what's partner. the cut? If be my partner, a partner. <laughs> Whenever a chick is asking you for what's the cut, as in she wants shares of your business that you've established, that should be an obvious red flag. That chick is not primarily there for you because you have shared values and she likes you as a person. But Chisha, all women are attracted to some form of um, monetary gain. That is true. But what percentage does that make up of the attraction? That's what matters. No one's just going to date a bum. I understand. But if she's asking questions like this, once shares of your company, obvious red flags. Now, here's another thing I've said in the past. What I believe would probably be an insane documentary, follow me on this, I wanna know what you guys think, is if they released a documentary on Netflix that showcased the number of women who target athletes, target celebrities, men of high net worth. You don't, you don't see any of these documentaries even though you know that they happen. But imagine a documentary that actually exposed these chicks. You know they have some type of best practices, systems that they use to lure men. You have stories of men going into hotel rooms and then housekeepers all of a sudden ending up pregnant with their seed after they've grabbed like um, used condoms. You know, it's the whole Drake thing when he put hot sauce inside of his condoms after he was done using them because he didn't trust the women who he was around to be above stooping low enough to go into a trash can and impregnating themselves. I think that would be one crazy documentary if it ever is created. Let's check out some comments here, see what the people have to say in response to this video. So this commenter says, I'm happy to hear there's some consequences. Very rare for us to see consequences in these type of situations. Hopefully we see more people getting held accountable in these situations, drinking the coffee. Somebody else here added, he dodged a whole missile. Here's another woman that says something was off about her, followed by another commenter who added, this is how it should be. Hold women accountable who do this. Somebody else who says, hopefully they hold white women just as accountable considering they originated the act. I'll say this, when you look at the P. Diddy situation and the people who are suing him, a lot of them are suing Diddy in hopes that they're going to get compensated for their trauma, damage, etc. The problem is 
most men, there, there are two things working against them, right? These chicks are most likely broke, right? Which probably can point to why, or maybe a factor, this is me theorizing here, a factor as to why you don't see a lot of these NBA stars, actors going after these chicks. They're, they're doing what they're doing because they don't have money. That could be one reason. Um, secondly, they most likely are in relationships slash married or they have an image they're trying to maintain. And so if you're suing somebody, you have to really be in a position where they've really ruined you and probably ruined your image. Imagine, you know, squeaky clean image. Let's say you're LeBron James or somebody, right? I have to do something extreme. And there's some 304 you've been messing with and she lies on you, doesn't get far. You end up proving her wrong because you have receipts. She backs up. Now you're going to go after her to waste your money and get money that she doesn't have. Most likely not. You just want it swept under the rug and to move on. Are you going to go after her criminally? I don't think you really would either because if you're in a position like LeBron James, you just want that whole idea and um, the whole story to just blow over, be swept under the rug as soon as possible so you can keep on living your life. I think there are two things working for a lot of these women and why they're able to falsely accuse men. Number one, there's a good chance they'll get away with it and the guy will just pay to save his image. Number two is there are a lot of chicks who are very bitter, who are upset, and that could be the motivation as well. Hopefully, if they start locking up more of these women who are out here lying on men, then we'll see less of it. As always, I'm curious to know, what do you think? Leave your comments down below. I appreciate you as always checking out yet another episode of The Coffee Pod. Till next time, I'm out. Peace.